Danny O'Dwyer. Prime example. Is he still protected? Let's have a look. Of course he's still protected. Of course he's still protected. Fucking coward, dude. Um, so, recently, Danny O'Dwyer uh, made a tweet where he was... He basically said... Uh, I think it was Count Dankula. Um, let me just check. Don't want to get it wrong. All right, but Danny O'Dwyer is the guy who... Uh, So Danny O'Dwyer was the guy who came out and, and literally just called uh, Duncan uh, racist, like out and out said it. I told Duncan to sue him. I said he should have. I, I literally messaged him and I said, "You got to sue this guy. You can't let that stand." Because here's here's the here's the line: um, alt right, too nebulous, Nazi, racist. You better be able to back that shit up. You better be able to prove that. And uh, you know, I I think Duncan's made some mistakes and made some edgy jokes. I don't think there's any demonstrable proof he's a racist. I wouldn't associate with him if I thought he was a racist. Um, you know, and he knows that. Uh, but, you know, Danny O'Dwyer literally said, uh, you know, uh, yeah, that was it. It was PewDiePie. Well remembered, my friend. Um, so basically, like, PewDiePie was in the news again. I don't know if you guys saw this. Uh, okay. PewDiePie recommended a youtube channel uh where he basically said oh this guy made a really good uh death notes video okay so I, all right um you're not even a real journalism that's right uh and then what it turned out was uh that the guy who made the video had done another video which had steven universe characters in it where they were talking about the gems and uh in the middle of the video uh it it points out been out doing deliveries on postmates listening to the stream just got a big tip thanks for keeping me company no worries, much love bro. Uh, food delivery guys were in the news today, sparking a big debate. I've got that lined up. Um, but yeah, appreciate the hustle. Appreciate you sharing your tip with me, man. Didn't need to do that. Keep it up. Uh, so anyway, um, in this video, right, and, and uh, this guy, uh, who, what was his name? It's like E semicolon R. Uh, he basically had made this like weird like montage to i think wagner i think i think it was wagner mu i'm not too sure uh my my memory for classical music is pretty diminished and he basically had made this video steven universe talking about the gems and of course he supplanted the gems with the jews right and in the video uh it goes to this bit inexplicably where it shows look at all these jewish people that work in entertainment and, and the media and we all know one of the anti-semitic go-to's is that there is a jewish conspiracy where you know the, the, the jewish people run the media and they do it because they secretly hate everyone who isn't jewish or something i don't know i mean i don't know the ins and outs i've never been that fucked in the head to listen to it frankly um you know and I remember watching a documentary with Trevor Phillips, who was a member of the British Inequality Commission. He was one of the guys that um, had really pushed a very strong progressive message. And he did a documentary where he said, you know, look, yep, Jewish people are overrepresented in certain industries. The bottom line, though, is it's probably just good old fashioned nepotism or like family business. You know, you do what your father does, you know, and it's like it's just not a big conspiracy thing when you start talking about that like you're basically saying whether you want to admit it or not right this is the truth okay when you talk about that and you say oh look here's a bunch of uh, jewish people working in mainstream media aren't they overrepresented you're, you're you're implying 
that there is a conspiracy, that they are actively doing something with that power, because it's nonsense, you know, they're not. Um, it's, it's, it's ridiculous. As I said, I, I would just explain it away as a combination of uh, nepotism, um, family connections, familial business connections, and probably as well, like, I mean, again, like, you, if, if your peer group does a certain thing, you're more likely to do that certain thing uh, career-wise anyway, right? So that video, I watched that video off the back of that. And I think, honestly, uh, not a popular opinion. I think it's an, I think it's anti-Semitic. I think, I think that ER guy made an anti-Semitic video. I, uh, because it was juxtaposed with the Steven Universe characters talking about like some sort of evil, some alien evil that wanted to control the universe. And then it's juxtaposed with talking about Jews. Now, again, I don't know if you've seen original Nazi propaganda but I studied this because I did sociology. I never talk about it. Um, it's a great shame. But I also studied it as a module when I was doing my degree in media and, and journalism. And Nazi propaganda came up. That's exactly what they did. They juxtaposed Jewish people with negative imagery. And some of it was frivolous and, 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 and fun. And some of it was very obviously and overtly racist, for example, juxtaposing them with uh, images of rats in the sewer subliminally, one frame out of 60. You know, this was, this, this was what the Nazis did to try and stir up anti-Jew sentiment. I, I cannot stand by that content creator, and I, frankly, I think that video is appalling. And I, I've seen some people I like and respect say it's just edgy memes. There's jokes, and then there is mimicking Nazi propaganda for the purposes of denigrating Jewish people, and I'm not on board with the latter. I'm always on board with the former. You'd have to go some to make me believe that that video was just a bit of harmless fun. Um, and also as well, at the same time that that video came out, tweets came out of him. Uh, somebody said, how do we address the Jewish question? Now, if you're not anti-Semitic, there is no Jewish question. What is the Jewish question? There is no question. There are Jewish people, and, uh, you know, that's it, right? I mean, what's the question? And the question is, what shall we do about these Jews? That's what the Jewish question is. Uh, fundamentally, when you boil it down, the Jewish question is an anti-Semitic conspiracy theory. Um... And again, if you're asking the Jewish question, you're a racist and an anti-Semite and not a good human being. The end. <laughs> again, the end. The discussion stops there. Because if, you, if it's in your mind that there's this group of people uh, that are out there doing all these like evil Machiavellian-style things, um, and you're, based, you're saying they're doing that based solely on their religion, you're prejudiced. Uh, you're as prejudiced as if you believe all Muslims are terrorists, all Christians are pedophiles. You know, choose your stereotype. But if you're not judging people on their individual merits and their basis, if you judge them on a facet of their character that can be universally applied, you're, you're, you're prejudiced. So the, um, the, the video for me was, you know, the one that, was shown was bad what's worse is he explicitly said let me let me see if i can find this tweet and i'll let you guys judge it okay um Okay, let me just see. I think I've got it here. Uh, because ER's on Gab as well. So I, I'm trying to find the image of this. Because the image circulated. Um, oh, and I should have bookmarked this. Because now it's just fucking... It's just all swamped with the think pieces about PewDiePie. Uh, 
Is this it? Um, oh, you have it? Thanks, dude. Appreciate it, Barry Starlight. I'm glad you're here. Sorry, so I'll bring this up. You, you guys tell me if this is an anti-Semitic tweet or not. You can all get involved in the chat. Give me your answers. There's only one right answer. There's only one right answer. So Donkey Kang's asked him, what's the best way to red pill people on the Jewish question? You'll notice they use the echoes. Uh, if, you want, if you don't know what echoes are, echoes were introduced. It was a plug-in mod. It was a plug-in mod on Twitter that Nazis made to identify Jewish people. And you could download this plug-in I think it worked on Chrome. I think it subsequently got removed off the Chrome store. And anybody who was Jewish or had identified as Jewish in their metadata got these three parentheses around them. Again, understand that Jewish people were branded in Nazi Germany with a star. Right? So understand what that is. Okay? And then a lot of Jewish people or uh, people who weren't anti-Semites started using them in sympathy and that's where that comes from okay so that's the history of that by the way so anybody that is using the three parentheses unironically or out without the context of a joke is an anti-semite what's the best way to red pill people on the jewish question and he asks, says pretend to joke about it until the punchline really and he uses the two slashes uh from poll uh, that's 4chan. Pretend to joke about it until the punchline really lands, I would assume. Wink, wink. What's he saying there? He is saying if you need to package anti-Semitism, if you need to convince people Jews are a problem, you do it with humor. Right? So, this is the guy PewDiePie recommended. Now, listen. I'm going to also t tell you why PewDiePie isn't a blank. Well, he doesn't make him anti-Semitic, okay? And the reaching they've done. And you'll notice, no one's talking about ER today. No one's talking about E semicolon R. No one's talking about him today. He's had his 15 minutes. People want to go after PewDiePie with his guilt by association nonsense. This guy, for me, is not an edgelord. I think he's a legitimate anti-Semite. I thought, like I said, the Steven Universe video is appalling. I really believe that. That's not just something to say because, like, I'm pulling a Sargon and I'm trying to distance myself. It's not, there was nothing humorous about that joke. It was literally a juxtaposition of Steven Universe cartoons talking about an alien life form going into sped up subliminal Nazi style propaganda about Jewish people who hold particularly powerful positions within media companies. That's not fucking funny to me. Um, and that doesn't necessarily make it bad that it's not funny to me but it's very clearly anti-semitic and i and i i can't see a logical argument to the contrary if anybody can make an argument and go oh yeah he's being ironic it's fucking the the irony defense is removed once you look at this tweet isn't it because he's saying let's use humor so it, it you know any get out of jail with the it's just jokes man ends when you say i will use jokes to peddle my anti-semitism so, that, you know, again, I, I like gaming, gaming and pandas defended this guy. And I love the guy. I love, game, I love gaming and pandas. He got banned off Twitter recently. But he's wrong. He's, he's wrong about this. This isn't edgelord stuff anymore. This is legitimate anti-Semitism. But here's the point with PewDiePie. PewDiePie didn't see the Steven Universe video, right? Because PewDiePie wasn't recommending the Steven Universe video. PewDiePie was trying to do a thing where he gave a shout out to small content creators and hyped them up. And PewDiePie, I, I guess, likes anime. Unlucky. Um, you know. Respect for PewDiePie had increased exponentially over the past few years. He's a, he's a weeb. Uh, oh, unlucky. And not just a weeb of any anime. Fucking Death Note. Get me the fuck out. Uh, but whatever. Um, I'll, I, I'll forgive PewDiePie, I suppose. Because uh, he has done a lot of, you know, I remember PewDiePie 
when he was playing games and oh, the screaming and the screeching and I'm oh, look how scared I am. I, I you know I remember that PewDiePie from the Let's Play videos. Like who he is now is like you know a million times more uh, sophisticated. So um anyway um so what PewDiePie did was shout out this content creator. He, that's all he did. And he said, specifically, he did a great video on Death Note. Now, I don't know how much attention PewDiePie paid holistically to this guy's channel. I'm going to say not much. Because if he'd known about this Gab thing, why would he follow him on Gab? PewDiePie didn't say he followed him. So PewDiePie's innocent on this front. You can't blame him for that. PewDiePie also probably didn't look at any of his earlier videos. The Steven Universe video is two years old. I don't know why it's still there. I don't know why it's still on YouTube, whatever. His uh, Death Note video was uh, fairly recent. It's one of his last three, I believe, in the channel. Um, but there were, there were some problems uh, with, with the Death Note video um, where he talked about how he'd had to re-upload it because he'd used a racial epithet. Uh, he'd used a racial epithet in the video. And it was a racial epithet aimed towards black people. Hate to link to Newsweek. I apologize. They're trash. Um, but they, they've, they've got it covered. Oh, are we going to get an ad here? Please. No, no. No. I don't want the ads. Please. Okay. Um, so, he did, he, oh, totally that's it, you hit the final straw, you freaking frick, I will have you know, I have a full katana it, collection, we and I do know how to use Thanks them, to I will go full sword art online on anyone who tries to disrespect me or my anime ever again. Mm. Uh... So, yes, uh, there was a Heather Heyer joke, I think, in the Death Note video. Okay, Heather Heyer, the woman that was killed by a neo-Nazi at the Charlotte, Charlottesville rally. Um, again, I don't think PewDiePie noticed it. He said in this defense video he didn't notice it. But as I said, there is a, uh, there, there was, he said, I had to re-upload the video because apparently YouTube have decided I cannot say N-word uh, in, in this video. And there's obviously a black character in, in Death Note. He put that in the description. And again, I know most of us don't read the descriptions. So there is no doubt in my mind that uh, this E semicolon R guy, uh, it, like... Out of all the people I've seen on the internet, like, unless he had, like, some fucking unbelievable defense and he was just going for the edgiest jokes of all time. Um, yeah, I, 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 I'd feel comfortable saying this guy's a, a racist. Absolutely. And PewDiePie promoted him. So it now becomes about did what did PewDiePie do wrong? Did PewDiePie deliberately promote this guy? Because PewDiePie's a racist, and he saw a fellow racist, and he wanted to put him over. That's the premise the mainstream media are going for. Non it's nonsense. You cannot fall into this trap of guilt by association. Here's what PewDiePie's guilty of. PewDiePie is guilty of, he saw a video, he liked the video. Perhaps even some of the edgy jokes went over his head. Hell, maybe he liked the edgy jokes and didn't realize just how edgy and unpalatable they are. None of these things made PewDiePie an anti-Semite or a racist. He then decided, without researching who this guy was, to put his brand, the biggest YouTuber in the world, he decided to tie his fucking brand to this guy's brand. That's what he's guilty of not doing his fucking research, that he just literally said, oh, I liked one video by this guy. I will promote this guy. He promoted 20, 25 other YouTubers in the same bit. Now, he's walked it back. He's apologized. He deleted the bit where he mentions this guy's videos from his original video. 
There's not much you can do once the horse has bolted. But the media are now trying to say PewDiePie is an anti-Semite and a racist and is promoting Nazi propaganda and all this other stuff. And it's like, okay, let me um, let me let me give you an example. All right, uh, let me let me find something that's analogous to this, so we can we can do a logical thought exercise. Uh, Uh, I don't know if you followed uh, the midterm elections uh, particularly much. Um, you know, I understand why you might want to break from fucking American politics. It's why I've deliberately not been talking about American politics so much on the podcast. Uh, but there is a Republican, uh, there's a black Republican U.S. Senator called John James. I think he's great. Um, I really do. Like, he's the kind of politician I can get behind. I've already said, like, you know, fuck the political class. But John James is a real fucking G. He is a real guy who talks from the heart. He's the kind of po politician I can get behind. I remember, um, let me, let me see if I can find it for you. Uh... He put this tweet out, which blew my fucking mind, um, because a political opponent tried to characterize him as being like a wealthy guy, one of the elite, uh, which I thought was very interesting, because Democrats usually believe black people are uh, systemically disenfranchised. John James, obviously a Republican and very much behind the Trump agenda, uh, often Your says... Your screen doesn't need repairing. Thank you. Uh, my ears do, though. Appreciate it. Thanks. Um... So here it is, this tweet, uh, after somebody said, uh, nothing describes him better than a man who has done nothing of value but mooch off his daddy, who mooched off his daddy. No action, just words. And he replied with this tweet. He said, I'm a West Point graduate, an Iraq veteran with two master's degrees. My dad was a Vietnam veteran and entrepreneur. His dad was a mason. His dad was a sharecropper. And his dad was a slave. You just got fucking wrecked, you Democrat fuck. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like, look, I saw this tweet. It was kind of going viral. And I went, you know what? Out of all the fucking Republicans I've ever seen, I'm fully behind this guy. Like, straight up. And then I started looking at his policies, his background. This was a guy like I, you know, I really wanted him to fucking do well in the midterms. He he didn't win, but um, he is he is a fucking he's my kind of politician. I mean, he's put his he put his money where his mouth is. He's got skin in the game, you know. He served his country in the air force. He uh, you know, served in Iraq. He has been to college, incredibly well educated, like such a fucking uh, you know, like just a nice guy. But he had a problem, you see. This this incredible uh black politician he fucked up he put out a uh tv ad uh where he was promoting himself as part of the midterms and somebody and i want to say you know a, a democrat uh somebody a liberal democrat uh you know activist had basically sabotaged his promotional video because what they did was, he did this thing where he was talking about America's schools, and it comes down a school hall, and one of the posters on the wall had a swastika on it. Just a swastika, just there in the video. And obviously, John James didn't make the video, and John James didn't fucking, you know, edit the video. And John James isn't a fucking racist, and John James isn't a Nazi, but somebody fucked him over, and he had to come out and apologize and say... Look, obviously, we're not trying to push Nazi propaganda. Obviously, I'm not a Nazi, but it was a mistake. We should have double-checked it. And he, again, you want a politician who takes ownership, John James. Look what he said. He didn't try and wriggle out of it. He just said, I need to fess up and admit that was a terrible error on our part. We should have caught it, and we didn't, and there is no excuse. Again, absolute G. Like, just fucking owned his shit. Let's talk about someone else, though. Let's, I've owned it. We fucked up. I'm sorry. Boom. And it's on me. You know, you notice this. At a time when politicians are trying to be less and less accountable, you got a guy like this who goes, yeah, it's my fault. It wasn't his fault. I mean, literally in no conceivable way was this on him. But he took responsibility for it uh, publicly, you know. 
So the question becomes, would you accuse John James of being a Nazi because there was a swastika in his video? I mean, technically he's committed the same crime, right? He's peddled Nazi propaganda, hasn't he? I mean, he's put the swastika out there subliminally in a video. So is he at fault? Is he a Nazi? Well, the obvious answer is, of course, he isn't, you know? Um, so... Uh, this brings us to PewDiePie. Now, I have said, I do not think it's a logical argument to label PewDiePie as a fucking neo-Nazi for linking to a video when all his crime is he didn't do his research. Now, here's the thing. If you think you won't suffer for this, linking to a channel that specifically called out big businesses and big media corporations for being part of the Jewish conspiracy, oh, lordy, lord. PewDiePie is going to feel this financially if he hasn't already and it's secret that someone will, you know, be pulling some sponsorships. Wall Street Journal do another article. You know, like, take your pick. Like, take your fucking pick, guys. Um, but here's what I don't understand. This push to, to say he is, he has ties to white supremacy. I'm going to jump off camera for just two seconds so you can see the headline. Send me pulling it everywhere. PewDiePie's ties to white supremacy spell serious trouble for the future of YouTube. Okay. I'm back. Ties to white supremacy. What are those ties? Please tell me, Vox. What are PewDiePie's ties to white supremacy? His his ties to white supremacy are completely imagined by you and people like you um and i nearly i never tweet at like people who are way above my fucking station you know what i mean i only tweet with people i could realistically interact with i don't think you'll ever find me like tweeting at donald trump or you know tweeting at like you know people with millions of fucking followers who like don't care i exist and i would never tweet a pewdiepie for the same reason i don't consider us to exist on the same planet frankly pewdiepie pewdiepie is a huge star i'm a fucking wretched esports journalist and host like he doesn't know i exist uh and probably never will uh so i, I didn't tweet at him but i saw a tweet you put out and i wanted to ask him why why are you not suing this publication immediately? That headline... That headline is it. You win. You have no ties to white supremacy. Please sue this publication. You must sue them. Because you don't have ties to white supremacy. And tacitly, if you allow them to say that you do... Well, <laughs> you know, you're saying, well, yeah, maybe. Maybe I do, eh? No, fuck that. Lawyer up. You got the money. You probably got the money to buy Vox. They're hurting. You know? So let's let's go through what they say is ties to anti-Semitism. Uh, sorry, uh, to white supremacy. Uh. Understand as well. You can make an argument to say he has ties to anti-Semitism because of that Death to the Jews video. It's a stretch. I think he just wanted to see if a bunch of people would do it. Terrible phrase to choose. Not really acceptable. Definitely paid for that one. Apologized. And then, you know, until now, hasn't really been involved. But I, you know, with, with jokes of that nature. But I do understand, um, again, like, why people might want to say, yeah, but that was an anti-Semitic joke. I mean, again, here's the difference. The guy he promoted, ER, uh, E semicolon R, sorry, uh, as he likes to be called, uh, promoted uh, what was very clear anti-Semitic propaganda in an anti-Semitic, you know, in the style of the Nazis. That's the joke, apparently. PewDiePie wanted to see what would third world, you know, we did this shit on Fiverr.com before PewDiePie did. Me and Sam were hiring guys off Fiverr to fucking debase themselves and then trying to pretend that doesn't make us disgusting humans, which it clearly does. We literally are paying people $5 to fucking dance for us. Like, it's gross as fuck, man. I mean, like, we're exploiting third world people. Like, you know, you laugh about it and then you go away and you think, oh, Oh, God, actually, no, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, the staple guy was good. 
the fucking people in that Malaysian village dancing with we are Reddit mods on our on their chest. Like looking back, I like I renounced that. Like I'm that was uh, you know like if, if I'd followed it up and sent them like. If I'd followed them up and sent them like a few hundred dollars and said I like, buy some textbooks or something for the school that these kids are clearly in, you know, then I then fine. But I didn't do that, did I? I I, I exploited third world labor for a joke. I'm a piece of shit. Uh, you know, again, these are the things that you just go to bed and you go, oh god, can I live long enough to atone for it? Probably not, right? Like whatever. But I, you know, I own my shit. I own my shit. That was wrong. We got we exploited third world people to get a cheap laugh. It's not funny. It's not. It's not cool. I know some of you guys thought it was. It isn't. I'm telling you, it was bad. Um, and PewDiePie did the same thing. Uh, and you know, like we, I would never have dreamed of getting them a hold of a sign saying "death to fucking Jews." I mean, Jesus fucking Christ. Um, you know, like. The reprisal, it was really bad as well, because the guys who did it got fired or fiver. Not PewDiePie sits on his pile of money. So it was a bad position to put those guys in. And he said he sent them some money and he tried to make it right. You know, those guys can't use a service that might have been essential to their survival because you wanted a cheap laugh. You know, we all got to live with that shit. We all got to own that shit. I don't know if PewDiePie is self-aware enough to know that was like a really, really bad thing to, to, to do to them. Maybe, maybe not, right? Um, but again, it's a stretch to say he's anti-Semitic because of it. Um, so anyway, let's, let's go through. Let's see what Vox have to say. Because I'm intrigued now. Because if you say someone has ties to white supremacy, here's what I think when you say ties to white supremacy. Um, you literally are in a fucking, uh, you know, you, you know white supremacists. You associate with white supremacists. Um... You regularly uh, associate with them, I should say. I think a one-off association. I've said I wouldn't do it, but, you know, whatever. Um, or you have ties to an organization. Or you have financial ties to an organization. Or you've interacted. In, you know, like ties. Yeah, it, 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 yeah. I don't think he does have ties. So I want you to convince me, Vox. Uh, YouTube's most popular user is once again facing a backlash, this time for promoting a highly anti-Semitic channel uh, by recommending a video fe featuring a racial slur and a white supremacist conspiracy. So, already problems uh, with the opening uh, paragraph. Uh, that video is anti-Semitic. Calling the channel highly anti-Semitic is false. It's fallacious because the majority of his videos aren't like that. Uh, the majority of his videos are just benign memes and, and whatever. I'm not saying the guy isn't a racist. I just said he was. I think he is. But the channel isn't a highly anti-Semitic channel. Uh, a highly anti-Semitic channel is like, I mean, trust me, they exist. You'll still find Stormfront fucking pieces of shit who have YouTube channels all secretly and stuff. So that's a highly anti-Semitic channel. A channel dedicated to anti-Semitism is a highly anti-Semitic channel. One video out of however many with anti-Semitic propaganda in it isn't a highly anti-Semitic. It's just an anti-Semitic channel. There's no need for hyperbole. When you use hyperbole, you start to d d uh, destroy your own credibility. So just don't do it. There's no need. Uh, you're a journalist. Just the facts will suffice. You don't need to exaggerate. It's already bad. We, we agree. He shouldn't have promoted the channel. We're all in agreement. What you lie him for? And then he said he recommended a video featuring a racial slur. The video didn't feature a racial slur. The video took the racial slur out and mentioned it had edited out the racial slur in the description, which PewDiePie didn't read. So the video did not feature a racial slur. And in fact, not even the anti-Semitic video had any slurs towards Jews in it. Just Nazi-esque propaganda about the Jews. And then he said uh, it had a white supremacist conspiracy in it. This refers to the idea. I'll talk about this after the PewDiePie thing. Um, right. There is a conspiracy out there, guys. And it's incredible to me that apparently what I'm... And Sargon's promoted this. Another reason why you think Sargon is like this paragon of enlightenment. And he's only rational. He only deals with the facts. 
he did go on a stream and said, apparently Heather Heyer didn't die because of a car. Heather Heyer was fat and Heather Heyer had a heart attack because she got scared by a car. She fell over and had a heart attack. Anybody peddling this conspiracy theory is fucking suspect. Because what the conspiracy theory entails, here's what you have to believe for the conspiracy theory to be logically held up, is that Heather Heyer was missed by the car because there's no video evidence for getting hit by the car. Um, and that the coroner, the chief medical officer who examined her body, who had publicly declared that uh, it was blunt force trauma that killed her, Right, he lied and committed per like so so he lied on a legally binding document for political ends. And then third, all of this evidence that she just killed over from a heart attack, this piece of shit's own defense lawyer didn't find, despite you on the internet knowing it. Garbage. It's garbage. If you believe Heather Heyer just fell over from a heart attack and died that way, you're a fucking retard. You you need to Stop looking at whatever fucking website you're looking at. Try and get outside. Try and interact with some real people. Try and unfuck yourself. Because it's 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 nonsense. There, there are too many moving fucking parts here for it to be a legitimate conspiracy. That's the white supremacist conspiracy. Right? Now here's what's interesting. Uh, the the, the, the Heather Heyer joke that was in the video... Like, Felix himself said, I, I'm i Swedish. It just wasn't that big news to us. Like, we heard about Charlottesville. We heard some guy drove a car into a crowd and some chick died. But I didn't see the joke. I didn't understand the joke. It's the other thing that annoys me, right? I love America. All my regular viewers know this. I'm going to be a citizen of this fine country one day and contribute to the wonderful country that is america the freest country on planet earth as far as i can tell despite all of its fucking problems out of every country i've ever lived in i've never felt a country as warm with a great mix of people love it here love america right 100 percent. but the thing i fucking hate about america is that they think all of their cultural norms and cultural beliefs they they do impose a form of cultural imperialism on the rest of the world they expect you to know about their news. They expect you to understand the meaning of their words and their idioms. And it's like, motherfucker, I'm from a country you've never been to. You don't know. You don't know what it is. And I'm British. I gave you the language you're fucking talking. So what the fuck are you talking about when you tell me I can't use this word and can't use that word? No. Oh, yeah. yeah, I hate that. I hate it. It's, 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 it's America's only fucking real problem that when you go into the internet... You've just got Americans going, but that word's bad. It's like, no, it means something completely different here. You know? It means something completely different here. It doesn't mean what you think it means. But but, but I don't like it, and I'm American. That doesn't mean you win. It doesn't mean you win the argument. Being American is not the trump card, no pun intended, to win every fucking argument. You have to respect other cultures. I thought that's what we did now. It's a global world, you know? If somebody does and says something you don't like, before you get all upset about it, like, have a look at the, their culture, their belief system, how they operate. I know we're all coming together on the internet, but like, even Star Trek had the prime directive, motherfucker. You know what I mean? America needs to just calm down with that shit, but whatever. Um, so, I believe Felix. I believe him. I believe someone in Sweden, this wouldn't have been constant news like sweden has its own problems we've all seen captain sweden flying around so we know what's going on in sweden you know motherfuckers getting blown up with hand grenades isis people being welcomed back by the fucking swedish government like hey i know you went away to join fucking jihad and bad people but hey we all make mistakes come like sweden's got its own problems so I'm no, I'm not saying it wasn't news in Sweden. I'm saying it wouldn't have been like it was blanket coverage. Like Charlottesville was blanket coverage in America. I live in America. I know it was blanket coverage. I believe him when when I when when he says he didn't see the joke, which is like one frame in the video. Oh, and it was okay. So he lives in the UK. Same shit. You know, it wasn't wall to wall blanket coverage. 
Dude, we haven't even completed fucking Brexit yet. If you turn on the BBC, let me tell you, it's, it, you know, America's stuff, it's Trump bad, Trump bad, now over to what's going on with Theresa May, all right? So if he lives in the UK, I didn't know that, thanks for informing me, uh, I still would believe he wouldn't understand the news. He's a Swede living in a foreign country. And he doesn't strike me as the kind of guy who follows real news anyway. He strikes me as the kind of guy who's like, What's in the news today? Watch his Keemstar video. Right, okay. You know, I've seen his PewDiePie news. He never, he's never talking about politics or like current affairs. It's always like, Alinity got caught selling panties or whatever. You know, like it's like that shit. So anyway, with 76 million subscribers, controversial gaming vlogger PewDiePie, aka Felix Kjellberg, is the most popular individual on YouTube. In a since-edited video posted on December 9th, he recommended a litany of YouTube channels he said he'd been enjoying recently, briefly mentioning a YouTube channel called E Semicolon R, noting that it produces great video essays. And again, I don't think uh, PewDiePie is particularly intellectual. Don't tell him I said this, because everyone else, whenever PewDiePie's in the news, you'll notice all the people that I've talked about earlier on the stream, they're all like, mm, mm, how can I get my tongue up his ass and hope he promotes me? I don't give a fuck about any of that. Like, I really don't. Uh, but a lot of people, they reply to his tweets, come on, man, we can do this. Please let my reply be the top reply. You know, it's really cynical shit like that. I don't think PewDiePie knows what a good video essay looks like. I don't think he's in a position to make a judgment. Uh, but he liked the video. Okay. Uh, including one on the Netflix movie Death Note, which I really enjoyed. He also linked to the channel in his description. Uh, the recommendation has since been edited out of the video. To casual observers, PewDiePie support of E semicolon R may appear harmless. Uh, one YouTube user supporting another. But a more than cursory dive into the child would have revealed a litany of disturbing imagery slurs and white supremacist messaging. The outcry against PewDiePie's recommendation on the channel was immediate, with media outlets and other YouTube users citing it as an example of PewDiePie's ongoing dalliance in alt-right culture. In response, PewDiePie released a follow-up video in which he sarcastically described the incident as an oopsie and scoffed at the idea he was promoting neo-Nazism by merely recommending someone for their anime review. Um, and again understand he said this guy produces good video essays i like this one about death note that is not a sufficient promotion first of all of the channel or any of the video he just said like listen this guy produces good video essays i haven't gone two years back and looked at the videos i just looked at the ones about anime right uh so and 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 then describing it as an oopsie what else would you describe it as it's an oopsie. He didn't do his due diligence and, like, review the channel appropriately. Again, he didn't think. I have 76 million followers. If I promote somebody who's bad, that's bad. It's bad for me. It's bad because they're going to get a, a percentage. Like, apparently he gained, like, uh, I don't know, 25, 30,000 followers immediately upon the recommendation or something. Uh, and, and that's not necessarily a good thing because I imagine some of those people, if you're already following PewDiePie, you're probably susceptible to uh you know being fucking manipulated by not great content or whatever and then you're gonna have a guy who's like hey does anybody want to ask the jewish question like you're a fucking idiot so you fucking go yeah i would uh, yeah yeah the jewish question <laughs> you know so it probably is a bad fucking thing it's an oopsie though it's a big oopsie but it's an oopsie it's not malicious like at no point uh, if he'd said Oh, I love this guy. He does edgy humor, and you should look at this video. I'm sat here saying a completely different thing. I go, well, holy shit, well, PewDiePie watched that video, and he must have known what was in it. Uh, he actually, yeah, I'd, I'd, have been, I'd have been with the fucking, you know, SJWs of this world going, yeah, that's completely unacceptable. Like, So it's just an oopsie. Uh... And then, okay, this is the PewDiePie quote from the video he released on December 11th, four days ago. All I said was, I like this guy's anime review. 
the channel creator, Issa Mikola, apparently likes to have hidden and not so hidden Nazi references in his videos. And obviously, if I noticed that, I wouldn't have referenced him in the shout out. I said publicly a year and a half ago, I was going to distance myself from Nazi jokes and that kind of stuff because I want nothing to do with it. Generally, I've done that. I don't really have a reason to dip into that again. It's just stupid. Now, I'll also add. This is how I know PewDiePie is not the sharpest knife in the fucking drawer. Because what you say is, you don't say, uh, I don't have a reason to dip into that again. It's stupid. You say it's got no place in a fucking civilized society. And I think Nazis are scum. You just say that and then you're fine. You're on record. Daily Stormer will stop writing articles about you. Didn't say that because he didn't think that far ahead. But the bottom line is as well, you know, I mean, he, he did that fucking stream where he was shooting like fucking Nazis or whatever in that sniper game and shot Hitler in the balls. And, you know, like, uh, even then he's like, listen, I, I don't want to get involved with the whole Nazi jokes. Yeah, Nazi jokes are obviously off limits right now. I think it's a goddamn shame. I think it's a goddamn shame that we can't joke about this, like, negative force because nothing cuts you to the bone like fucking humor. Charlie Chaplin knew that when he did The Dictator. Mel Brooks knew that when he you know helped write the fucking producers and you know I, I i think i think there's nobody more ripe for mockery than nazis especially now in fact let me let me uh well i'll read this article first and then i'll just show you the average you know there's no i've seen white supremacists if a white supremacist wakes up and looks in the mirror generally and they think they're the superior fucking race uh, you know you pity those fucks they're, they're they've all got genetic fucking defects and brain problems you know um but uh anyway he goes but each of the f three videos pewdiepie featured in his since removed shout out featured fairly obvious examples of the channel's offensive content and i would argue these things are obvious if you look for them maybe that's a reasonable position but if you're just listening to stuff and you're not looking at, at, at everything through this lens of everybody's a Nazi, everything's racist. Maybe you don't pick up on stuff in the same way a Vox journalist does. In fact, not only did one part of the Death Note review that Kilberg said he liked directly invoke a racial slur in the video description, the first 15 seconds of part two, which, again, I don't know if felix watched it he didn't reference part two uh contained a blatant reference to the 27 incident in which kjellberg himself dropped a racial slur so what there was some sort of you, we all remember when felix said oh he's an n-word to a PUBG guy hiding under a truck you know again can't really justify that but um i think it's funny that a lot of people who have mocked heat in gaming moments have all done the same thing themselves it's quite interesting, isn't it? Um, it's almost as if the word is so taboo that when you want to get something out of your fucking system, you say the most taboo thing that's like as cathartically to exercise it. I'm pretty sure that's a psychological phenomenon. I'm sure I've read about that somewhere. Again, doesn't make it acceptable. Certainly doesn't make it acceptable on a live broadcast where you know you might have people from disparate uh, you know ethnic groups tuning in. Imagine what it does to them. Imagine how it makes them feel. And it certainly isn't acceptable for somebody with a large audience to say that word. I do believe he paid the price and atoned for it, and hasn't done it since, and will no doubt never do it again. I got no doubt in my mind, right? But is he the only guy who's ever said it? No, fortunately not. In fact, we've already talked about how other people do say it. That's... So this is a stretch. Saying the M-word once, a white supremacist does not make. Indeed, I remember when I talked about a guy called Violent Acres, who was a Reddit moderator, and he ran a channel... Uh, well, he was exposed as being... He ran all these uh, horrible Reddit subreddits, like Jailbait. One was r slash n-word. And they've obviously all since been deleted. And he got doxxed by a journalist. And we talked about it on an episode of Unfiltered. And I've had people message me going, you say the n-word on that episode. And I go, well, yeah, it's like... It was it, contextually, I think it's okay. But maybe it isn't. Maybe that'll come and bite me back, you know, four years from now. But I would, I would just say this. Like, I am, ref you know... I, I think it's silly if you can't have a discussion about the word and say the word. Like, I think that's crazy to me. So, so context definitely matters. 
And I've seen iDubs. Good question there, my friend. I've seen iDubs use it and the spicy F. And understand the only reason I don't say these words when I'm streaming is pretty much uh, for TOS. Like, I, 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 if I want to talk about what words people say, I mean, we're having a conversation at a round table or a live event, I'd, I'd say the words because I think, like, you know, I'm, I'm with George Carlin. You know, I've always been with George Carlin on this, that the words aren't inherently racist and context matters. Once you start saying they don't, you move into this weird, um, you know, political correctness as a form of, like, linguistic fascism. I'm not interested in that. But I will respect the terms of service of any service I use. And I certainly don't want to offend, you know, any of my... Uh, I don't want to hurt the feel... I want, to, I want any viewer who comes to my stream to feel welcome and realize, hey, you know, I'm... I'm with you 100%. We're, we're all coup de la. So certain words I deliberately remove from my lexicon, of course. Um, Idubs has gone the other way and said, by, if you, by refusing to say the word and making the word taboo, you give it power. I'm going to make it ridiculous. And sure, that maybe that works. Um, and I don't, I don't think Idubs is a racist, and I would never call him as such. What PewDiePie did, completely different. He said it in the heat of the moment. Ugh. So you know, again, it's not a good look, is it? It's not. It's not a good look. It's not acceptable behavior. Uh, you just have to think. Th think about it this way. Would you? Would you do it at work? Would you do it in a public place? And if the answer is yes, you might be antisocial. You might have a problem. I'm not saying you're a racist, but you know that that word pretty much isn't in my lexicon. I I fucking I scorched it out. Uh, because it's, it's, you know, it's not, like, it's not fucking acceptable. It's a word that exists solely to dehumanize a group of people. And that's the only reason it exists. It's not like, you know, I'll champion the spicy F to a certain degree because historically it means something, co means something completely different in the UK. And I think it's an example, again, of that cultural imperialism we're talking about. I don't consider that uh, as bad as the N-word. The N-word is fucking, uh, it's just an outrageous word that existed to refer to black people in a way that made you think of them as something as other than human. That's it. it, 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 it it's pretty indefensible, I think. Um, uh, so anyway, we get back to PewDiePie, and he said here, uh, you know, that, that he, there was a video of him using a racial slur in it, again, I mean, I think it's pretty interesting, because I think PewDiePie wouldn't have promoted this guy if he'd even watched the part two of the video. Why would I promote a guy who has used a clip of me doing something I want everyone to forget about? All right, so here's what I think. I think literally... Okay, I think, right, run this scenario through your mind and tell me if this is plausible. I think PewDiePie is a weeb, and I think he was looking at weeb shit on YouTube, and I think he got recommended this one video by this weeb guy who made a bunch of weeb shit, and he watched that one video, and he said, hey, I'm doing this series where I shout out small-time content creators. I did enjoy that video, and I remember that video, so I'm going to promote that video. I don't think he watched any other content by this dude. I don't think you watched any other content by this dude. I think the YouTube algorithm sold PewDiePie down the river here. Does that sound like... The, the, you know, does that sound plausible to you guys? Or does that sound like, uh, I'm trying to make excuses for him? Because that feel Like, I use YouTube. I go over there, I sleep in my fucking bed. I get my laptop out, I put it on my chest. And I disappeared down a rabbit hole. You want to know what I was watching last night? Ancient fucking aliens. What am I doing with my life? I watched an entire series of ancient aliens drifting in and out of consciousness, watching ancient aliens, having it beamed into my brain. Like, what am I doing? You know? And now I'm going to get fucking recommended, like, conspiracy theory videos and all sorts of bullshit. You know, creepy pastas. And it's like, you know, I'm going to click on some of them, right? Like, the YouTube algorithm is designed to be this perpetual content you know, boom, 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 it fires the content into your brain. So, you know what I mean? Like, it's like, you ever watched a Joe Rogan video? And then, you know what your recommendations are? First of all, millions of other Joe Rogan videos, with guests that you probably don't give a fuck about, loads of videos on MMA, because it just goes off the keywords, you know? And, then, and, and, and that's that, you know? So, that's just how you deal with it. Um... So anyway, uh, back to back to PewDiePie. Uh, I like I I just literally think he liked one video, 
this, this is what makes sense to me. Like, I think he liked one video by one guy. He did no research or because he's fucking PewDiePie. He's probably out like spending his fucking millions on bullshit, and and you know wanted to do something nice and inadvertently promoted a guy who's you know got the classic racist past that the milkshake duck terrible meme is about. He didn't know. I don't like I said. I don't even think he watched the videos that were on the fucking screen. I think he watched de the first part of Death Note and nothing else. Um, uh, essentially, anything more than the briefest research on Kelberg's part would have revealed the E semicolon R cha uh, channels overt anti-Semitism and white supremacist signifiers. Okay, well again, why should? Okay, wrong question. Why would? PewDiePie uh, do more than the briefest of research for a throwaway thing that he's doing. Like, you just... I don't know if you've noticed the average content creator, the average human is pretty much fucking lazy. And it was just a thing he was doing. It wasn't like a big, well-thought-out, well-researched video. Like, why E semicolon R is the best content creator on YouTube? Again, if he says that, then my criticism is more harsh. He fucking literally just said, like, you know, this dude uh, made one video that I liked. That's it. So he clearly only did the briefest of research. That is a defense. That isn't a criticism. It's a, it, it, well, okay, it's the criticism and the defense. It's, hey, you didn't do your research, you doofus. Oh, but I can't blame you for being an anti-Semite because you didn't do your research. Ta-da! End the article, by the way. You just end the article there. Logically, you just end the article there. Well, he clearly didn't do the research. So what are you holding him accountable for? Oh, yeah. My bad. My bad. And that's it. End of fucking story, right? Uh, should PewDiePie have known better? Question mark. Um, his critics say yes. Though he has been dismissive about the uproar, this is far from the first time he has dabbled in alignment with alt-right beliefs. That link there is the link to the... Uh, video that we talked about the fiber video i again hiring two people to dance and say something controversial and reprehensible so you can make a youtube video about it and get more money off that than they'll ever see in their sad lives there's a lot lot of grounds to criticize that on doesn't make you alt right sorry the alt right don't do that the alt right don't hire people on fiber to hold up signs do they? And he's previously faced backlash for this type of incident so many times. So many times that you can only list one other example. Like, put it this way. Again, if this was like the fifth or the sixth, then I'm like, again, yeah, fuck this dude. But it isn't. This is the third. And it's not even the third because it's like, okay, 80 months ago, you got... The Fiverr guys. Then he... N-word guy, right? Okay, these are two different things. Is he an anti-Semite? Is he a racist? Is he both? None of these things in isolation prove either. And then now you've got him promote... Like, this is terrible. Like, if you were building a case against this guy to put him away in prison, you've got nothing. So, to say... And, and, and that is it, by the way. So to say it's happened so many times... You yourself know it hasn't happened so many times. Because if it had happened so many times, you would list every single fucking time. You haven't done that. You have lied in print. He should sue you. You will lose. You will lose. Because any reasonable court that deals with a defamation case will go, okay, so you've said he's been involved in this type of incident so many times. You've linked to one previously. What stops you linking to this one? And you go, well, I didn't link to it because it didn't exist. Did you know it didn't exist when you wrote it? You must have, because you did. You must have looked and saw that you couldn't link to it. Thank you. Dink, dink, have the money, my friends. Okay, so. Uh, PewDiePie and his supporters say his critics are overreacting to a harmless mistake. They are. Um, not harmless, necessarily, but a mistake. Uh, all while tens of thousands of new subscribers have fo followed the anti-Semitic channel based on PewDiePie's brief endorsement. And what does that tell you? What does that tell you about the system we've got? 
in place. This is a bigger problem, man. They got nothing to do with anti-Semitism or fucking racism. PewDiePie said, hey, I like this one video by this guy. And tens of thousands of people were, well, PewDiePie likes it. I like it. Smash that like and subscribe button. Like, fuck, man. I mean, like, we got bigger problems as a fucking species than your fucking imagined fucking anti-Semitism. You know? Like, we got way bigger problems. Why Why does a shout-out from a guy with, like, 76 million followers immediately make you relevant in the cultural sphere, you know? Like, as if popularity and mediocrity have ever been fucking contradictory forces, you know? Like, some of the most popular artists in the world are fucking terrible. That's why I still stand by my claim that Ninja's mediocre. I think he is don't think he's like anything special i think he's had a i think he's grinded hard worked hard and serendipity took over whatever you know all right the e semicolon r youtube channel has a long history of anti-semitic imagery and messaging that's a link to the steven universe video the channel's anonymous creator who uses the channels i mean the average, I mean, for whatever reason, the average YouTube creator is anonymous. Uh, loaded sentence, deliberate. Oh, he's anonymous. He's ashamed of his views. I'm pretty sure he isn't. He's a fucking idiot. He, like, literally came out and tried to defend all of this stuff. And even then tried to incriminate PewDiePie further with stupid tweets. Like, um, definitely didn't do PewDiePie any favors. And as I said, he's had his 15 minutes. No one's going to remember who this cunt is next year. No one's going to know who he is. No one's going to watch his video. No one's going to watch his content. All those fucking subs that jumped on. I mean, like... First of all, YouTube don't even roll out your videos to your subscribers, even if you're the most dedicated subscribers on planet Earth. And then, second, uh, how many people subscribe to people, like, symbolically? And then, like, oh, yeah, yeah, whatever. Don't watch the video. Shit, like, I mean, I'm subscribed to Jim Sterling. I only watch the Jimquisition. <laughs> you know what I mean? Whatever. Um, and a long history. Two years. All right. Go on. Two two years, three videos. Okay. Uh, the channel's anonymous creator uses the channel's handle on several online platforms. Also habitually links to his accounts on alt-right identified social media sites, including the white supremacist Haven Gab. Oh, lordy lord, you're going to have to let it slide. Just because you're on Gab don't make you a Nazi, friends. Sorry. Uh, the Death Note review that PewDiePie cited uses a racial slur to refer to one of the characters in the movie. Yeah, we know that. In the description, not the video. Uh, so that's wrong. Um, the video also contains a reference to a false white nationalist conspiracy theory. I mean, that's just a flat-out lie, that sentence. The Death Note review that PewDiePie cited uses a racial slur. It absolutely doesn't. It, in its description, it had one. Nothing to suggest he would have clicked on the description. How many of us do that when we use YouTube? The video also contains a reference to a false white nationalist conspiracy theory that Heather Heyer, the protester who was murdered at the white supremacist Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, and whose killer was recently convicted and sentenced to life in prison, actually died of a heart attack. Um, it, it's, it's a weird one. I, I, so I'll just say this. Uh, you can have blunt, uh, blunt trauma to the chest and still die of a heart attack. Like, you can get shot and die of a heart attack, you, can, you know, but, like, the, the bullet killed you, you know? It's weird that, like, you don't need, again, you just don't need to protest this much. I'm sure she did probably die of cardiac arrest after blunt force trauma of the chest. These are not contradictory statements if you just know how basic human physiology works. I've already said anyone who believes the conspiracy theory that she just, like, fell over and died of a heart attack because she was overweight is you know they're very suspect you should probably cut people like that out of your lives if they can't if they can't be salvaged because they got problems um but the 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 idea that you must say she didn't die of a heart attack well, if i smash your chest in with a fucking sledgehammer you'll probably die of a heart attack uh and a bunch of other problems but probably cardiac arrest will get you first so you know it's fine to say that she died of a heart attack but she was still murdered by that piece of shit in the car. Relax, you know? Vox. Um, the indirect dog whistle form of alt-right messaging is common for the channel, 
which deliberately uses pop culture imagery, mainly drawn from animated series like Death Note, and in particular the Cotton TV Network series Steven Universe, as a tool for spreading white supremacist propaganda, nothing to do with PewDiePie. Some of the many examples littering the channel's videos include frequent references to media creators and other public figures using the historically loaded slur Jews. Historically loaded slur Jews. Hmm. I just thought Jews was okay. Is Jews not okay? No. I mean, let's say that. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, is I didn't think Jews was a slur. I thought like <laughs> I know people who say I'm a Jew. <laughs> like I know Jew Jewish people who say they're Jews, you know? Like is Jew Jew Jews a slur, I guess. Uh Vox. I mean again, this is like you've heard all my criticisms. <laughs> like, but how can I stand by this? How is this article good? Like, how is this reality? The historically loaded slur, Jew. You mean, you mean the abbreviation for Jewish people? Are we saying it's a slur now? Jewish people call themselves Jews all the time. It's no problem. Like, okay. all right. Uh, ridiculous. Uh, and references to anti-Semitic conspiracy phraseology, such as the Jewish question, which he never said in his videos. He only said on Gab. Uh, a frequent alt-right dog wh whistle that refers to the... Uh, my German pronunciation is terrible. I'm sure Faramir will uh, wreck me. Uh, end, endle, Endlösung der Judenfrage. Endlösung der Judenfrage. German for final solution to the Jewish question, which of course was what we all know the Holocaust was. Um, the, the channel also refers to black characters. Uh, I won't even say the word just in case. Contains mentions of being red pilled. Red pills, not um. Off topic. Is there any chance of bringing the podcasts to Spotify? Is the revenue good enough for that? Uh, there's zero revenue if I put it on Spotify. iTunes, zero revenue. So, I mean, I guess, but then it's like it's an extra layer of work. So, do I want to, for no money, take extra time to go? You, you, do, do, do. like if I felt. There was an like I, I think iTunes is still the definitive podcasting platform for audio podcasts. So if that if I if I suspect that changes, we will probably discontinue iTunes and go to Spotify. But we're already on two. We're on Podbean and iTunes. Like I can't justify uploading to a third. Uh, red pilled apparently is uh, is bad. It's not red pilled. Red pilled refers to being not influenced by the mainstream media and not going along with prescribed narratives. I am red pilled. I am based. I will not buy into your bullshit. It's not an inherently racist term. Uh, to pretend it is is uh, uh, ridiculous. Is it cringeworthy? Of course. If, again. If someone came up to me and went, Hey, Richie, man, uh, uh, I love your work. I'm red-pilled as fuck. Just like, you know, ugh, ugh. like, and, you know, it's just too cringe for me. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, 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 it's, a, it's a Matrix reference, right? You know, it's, a, it's cultural, you know. Uh, it's being red-pilled. Blatantly racist imagery and stereotypes. Homophobic. And again, why why do you link to the evidence you have of the red pill thing, which no doubt you do, uh, and then you say blatantly racist imagery and stereotypes, homophobic slurs, mocking references to feminism, and the idea of rape culture, sexist slurs and sexist portrayals of women. Right. You're all over the motherfucking road here, Vox, because let me tell you, racist imagery and stereotypes, give me a link to that, please. Um, homophobic slurs, give me a link to that. Mocking references to feminism, Modern fourth or third, fifth, whatever fucking wave of feminism you are, it deserves mockery. Sorry, what it's become, your movement, your ideology. It's it, and 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 even if it didn't deserve mockery, no no belief system should be immune to mockery. That isn't the same as being racist or homophobic, is it? And I'm sorry that your precious little movement, your precious little belief system, you're trying to lump it in as if it's it, it, it should be a protected thing. No, fuck you. It's a belief system. It's a belief system predicated on a lot of lies, like the fucking wage gap and all this nonsense, and it deserves to be ridiculed and scrutinized. You want? It's not the same as hating somebody because of the color of their skin or their fundamental sexuality. It isn't. You don't, you're not born a feminist. Calm the fuck down. Uh, and the idea of rape culture, yes, rape culture, 
Good old rape culture. Rape culture where you say this civilization where rapists are reviled, where even the allegation of rape is enough to end your career, enough to put you into the margins of society. This is the true rape culture, not countries that literally have no women's rights whatsoever. It's actually Western America and Western Europe that has the rape culture problem not the countries with you know still there's no co yeah they still have conjugal rights you get to just rape your wife uh you know they're they're not the rape cultures we're the rape cultures okay believe you nice one box good also uh people who laugh at rape culture as a concept not the same as racists doesn't work does it there's a scale you know um and again no source necessary sexist slurs surely you must be able to link to this i'm guessing you're doing the thing where you say bitch is a sexist slur it's not uh and sexist portrayals of women this is hugely uh subjective i would say uh so okay uh, and you also didn't back up any of these claims so i'm gonna say you're lying like in all the other paragraphs where you lied in the thumbnail for one video, oh, okay, we're in the thumbnails now, uh, the channel's created distorts a black actor's face to exaggerate their features in a blatantly racist fashion. I actually saw this. Um, I'm trying to think. Which bit was it? Because I did see another video by the C-Semicolon R guy. It was his Star Wars review. And obviously had John Boyega, uh, who's in, in you know the new wave of Star Wars. And he did do a edit where it went into the Russell Jimmy's meme. If you remember the Russell Jimmy's meme, it's got a gorilla in it. Uh, and I thought, yeah, this is this is actually he's 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 deliberately gone for the racist meme. Uh, well, no, he's deliberately gone for the meme that can be racist, uh, but by comparison of you know the the, the classic racial denigration of black people uh, by comparing them to apes but you've done it in a way the way you can defend yourself this is what i mean look this e semicolon r guy is a piece of shit who deliberately knows what he's doing he is skirting the borders to be deliberately racist it's just like no doubt about it there's no doubt about where he stands on any of these issues um you know uh, then he she goes on to say and throughout many videos focus on Steven Universe uh, He presents the show's characters as an analog for Jewish people coding them with anti-semitic stereotypes in one such video That's the gem video I told you about he portrays one character as a deceptive tool for a global Jewish conspiracy Is indicated by a montage of public figures and businessmen and then ends the video with an alter version of a white supremacist slogan known as the 14 words Yes, he did do all of that. Yes, I consider that video to be anti-Semitic. No, PewDiePie did not promote this video. And no, PewDiePie didn't know this video existed because it was a two-year-old video on an obscure YouTube channel he'd clearly just discovered. Um, and, and look, actually, I'm not even going to read this whole thing. We'll literally be here for another hour, like. Uh, but but you can see. I'll just give you the, the, the thing here. PewDiePie promoted Nazi symbolism. Right, well... What was that? This is where he literally waved and you said, uh, you said because this screenshot of him had his right arm raised, uh, you literally said he was being uh, racist. Um, and then you also had that video where he did the death, yeah, death to all Jews. We know about it. So he's not promoting, um, he's not promoting Nazi symbolism here. He made an edgy joke. And the joke is, what outrageous shit are you willing to say for money? It's, you know, it's 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 the social media equivalent of bum fights, what he did. This picture is outrageous. YouTube star PewDiePie hiles himself. Uh, that He didn't do that. I mean, that is, an, that is a lie. This is what I mean. I don't know why you're not going to fucking take down this fucking publication, dude. Like... Why you just wouldn't sue them? Like, like you, you, this this is a slam dunk defamation case. It is it is literally like a slam dunk. Like uh, you know, there's not a lawyer in the world that would say, well, yep, actually, uh, pewds, you might have ties to white supremacy, so uh, we better leave this one on the shelf. You know. Um. But anyway, so it gets worse. Uh, Vox did this article. Um, 
Let me let me uh, also show you uh, what they did to PewDiePie. Uh, another journalist from BuzzFeed, of course, decided that well we should uh, we should really try and pile on. You see, what they want, what these media companies want is to be able to exert power and influence. They don't care about any of these causes. I mean, they're acting all woke and everything, but what they want to do is be powerful. What they want to do is shape the landscape so they can continue to promote their progressive fucking nonsense. And that's what this is all about. It's got, literally, it's got nothing to do with reality. It's got nothing to do with any of that. So let me let me show you this. Um, I'm sure you, if you've heard of uh, if you've heard of BuzzFeed, um, let me let me find the the link. Um, because I just want to make sure he hasn't deleted it. Because I might have to use screenshots then. Uh, where did he do it? So anyway, I'm sure if you've heard of BuzzFeed, you've heard of Joe Bernstein. He's like the legendary BuzzFeed writer. He's like literally like the fucking dude who uh, has written some of the most like pathetic BuzzFeed articles of all time. He used to follow me at some point, I guess back when I was on like Breitbart Watch or whatever. But the guy is a fucking loser and um and uh like some of the shit he writes is just like unreal so he saw that this anti-semitic thing was jumping uh, off on pewdiepie again and wanted to pile on wanted to get his share of the attention after all this is someone with 76 million followers on youtube this is like the big biggest youtuber in the world how can i get my shine Call him an anti-Semite, and now people have to pay attention to me. That's how the hustle works. That's how the journalist hustle works. Here it is. Following on the news that PewDiePie endorsed an anti-Semitic YouTuber. Endorsement is such a strong word. Recommended an anti-Semitic YouTuber. Sure, he did. Uh, endorsed. You're making it sound like he stands by the guy's politics, and you're doing that deliberate, and it's bullshit. Um... Here's a screenshot from a recent video in which PewDiePie played a shooting game with and laughed at a fan named Rabbi Shekel, whose avatar is the famous anti-Jew, the happy merchant. And, and that's another part of, like, you know, Nazi propaganda. You know the one where the, uh, the guy's rubbing his hands and they, with an anti-Semitic caricature. We've all seen that on the internet, okay? So he says that, and I'm like, well, that's not a good look. That's not a good look at all. Here's the problem. Joe's lying. Joe's a journalist and Joe is lying. Because of course he's lying. So, because why wouldn't he? So actually PewDiePie replied with the clip of the video. And what you're going to see in this clip is PewDiePie has no interaction whatsoever with Rabbi Shekel. He wouldn't be responsible for this guy's behavior anyway. He doesn't laugh at the guy. He doesn't acknowledge the anti-Semitic meme in any way, shape, or form. Joe Bernstein has just lied. I would have deleted this tweet and retracted and said I got it wrong if I wanted to retain my journalist credi journalistic credibility. But obviously, if you've ever worked for BuzzFeed, that's already dangling out, you know? Like, same way I have to defend myself with Breitbart. You are the flip side of the Breitbart coin, my friend, whether you want to fucking admit it or not. Um... So look, here it is. This is the PewDiePie's reply. I'm gonna show you the video. Hey, some more really right. So I'm just gonna also contextualize it. So he's playing this game, right? You like you can see, it's it's the CS models. That's right. And a guy came up to him and said, "Hey PewDiePie, I love you. Like you got starstruck. You know, I love you, cunt, and I love you, shit. I love what you did." And this guy, Rabbi Shackle, shot him in the head. And PewDiePie didn't even look at him, didn't even acknowledge him, and he just laughed that a guy got shot while he was giving like this enamored speech. Tell me. If, they, like, if this is anti-Semitic, guys, we all got to get off the fucking internet. Like, because, you know, we're, we're, we're all contributing in some way, shape, or form. Just watch. I was going to say, hey, man, I really appreciate your content. You've gotten me through some tough times, and I respect the... <laughs> <laughs> all right, okay, that video again. This is the video that Joe Bernstein is saying is and is is PewDiePie laughing at a, a anti-Semitic character uh, in in his game. 
Say, Watch it again. Hey man, I really appreciate your content. I don't even know if he I saw the guy. Times and I respect the guy. <laughs> <laughs> right, that, Joe Bernstein says, is proof PewDiePie's, and it's like, you motherfuckers are reaching so fucking hard, it's embarrassing. Like, your agenda is 100% showing, and, but just to clarify so I don't get called an anti-Semite, your agenda is to take down the biggest YouTuber to make yourselves fucking relevant again in your failing, dying media publications have to be propped up by venture capital money year upon year. Like, so, seriously, guys, just a quick show in the chat. I see you're all still with me. Was that anti-Semitic, that video? Yes or no? Simple yes or no? Right. So, and, and okay, next question. Did Joe Bernstein describe that clip in an accurate manner? Yes or no? So what are we doing? Like, you can see it. I can see it. We all can see it. But we're just going to let the fucking media smear this guy because he's top dog. It's, it's gibberish. It's gibberish. It's got to be fucking stopped, man. Like, PewDiePie, his mistake was he didn't look into a dude he was going to personally attach his brand to and he absolutely should have done it and in doing so he might have inadvertently turned some of his fan base towards content that uh is uh of a, a undoubtedly an anti-semitic nature i hope he feels suitably bad about it he's done all he can to remove it from the video and everything else but like he's not an anti-semite guys not on that evidence it's just evidence-based you know like you just gotta fucking do it dude Um, but then, okay, so what comes off, off, uh, what, so what do we go to next? Well, uh, I, I gotta take you back to that awful article, okay, because they, they literally, you can see how desperate they are, right? Every person named here should sue this publication uh, i i i i hope at least one or two of them uh, do because they go down and then you see they start again because guilt by association is the only way they can build evidence that you're guilty of the thought crimes you see there's there's no evidence because you've never said the bad thing you've never done the bad thing you, you your personal values don't align with the bad belief system. So what they do is they create this guilt by association. Guilt by association. That's what they always do. So. Uh, and while PewDiePie only follows a few hundred people on Twitter. Many of them are alt-right identified figures. Including Jordan Peterson. Right. Okay. Jordan Peterson. Alt-right. Jordan Peterson. A man who has publicly spoken about the horrors of Nazi Germany and totalitarian governments and why they happen and has a whole series of uh, lectures on his YouTube channel about how we need to avoid authoritarian belief systems is alt-right. A group of people who want to create an ethno-state and a totalitarian system. What can you do, my friends? What can you do? What can you do, right? When a, 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 a PhD psychologist and, you know, well-regarded speaker is alt-right, when he actively decries alt-right belief systems, authoritarian belief systems, racist belief systems. So you're already on shaky foot. The prominent Gamergate writer, Ian Miles Chong, actually, this is also a lie, because Ian Miles Chong... Back when Gamergate was happening, he was a social justice warrior. He was part of the, uh, what was it called? Um, uh, you know, over, uh, 
override, uh, network override or whatever the fuck it was called, with all of those people, Chris Cluey and all that, doxing motherfuckers on Christmas Day because they were gators. So during, so he, he, he uh, override, yeah, the crash override, thank you. So he wasn't a Gamergate writer. During Gamergate, he, was, he opposed Gamergate. Like, I know we still have to talk about Gamergate. T to the average online journalist, Gamergate is their Vietnam. It's like they still talk about, oh, God, what did you do during Gamergate? What side were you on? Oh, they, they came from everywhere. They were in the trees. Oh, the gamers. Like, grow the fuck up. The average person don't give a fuck about your hashtag, you fucking retard. What are you talking about? But yeah, Emiles Chong was on the fucking... He was on your side. And then... When he woke up and admitted he only did it because he was getting fucking bullied and he was insecure about the way he looked and he was overweight and he was miserable and was a fucking incel or whatever the fuck. That's right. He grew a set of balls and he came out and he said, I can't live with this bullying and this bullshit anymore. The Crash Override Network's a disgrace. These leaked chat logs are all genuine. In fact, what's interesting is they never proved any coordinated harassment from Gamergate, but they certainly did from the Crash Override Network. But you're not allowed to put it on Wikipedia. It gets deleted every time because there's some hardcore fucking Zoe Quinn fucking ass licker who's embedded themselves at the highest echelons of fucking Wikipedia. Weird how that works. We all know it's true. Uh, Infowars editor Paul Joseph Watson, technically an editor at large, okay, whatever, does still associate himself with InfoWars. Probably should go independent, if I'm being honest. But okay, whatever. Uh, the alt-right YouTube philosopher Stefan Molyneux. I don't really like Stefan Molyneux. Um, I don't know if I'd characterize him as alt-right. Does talk a lot about ethnostates, though. Don't like him. Uh, the alt-right Canadian blogger Lauren Southern. Right? Again, I might be willing to give you that one. The recently red-pilled... Okay. <laughs> this is outrageous. The recently red-pilled YouTube personality, Lacey Green. Lacey Green's an intersectional fucking feminist. By recently red-pilled, you mean she started fucking Chris Reagan. <laughs> and as a result of meeting somebody from outside of a regular social strata and falling in love with them, she actually realigned her, you know, realigned her thought process to be like, oh... Maybe I shouldn't hate everybody that thinks slightly differently to me. In other words, she grew the fuck up. Recently red-pilled. Recently red-pilled. Like, how does... What, like... Like, Chris Reagan was throwing a fuck in her and screamed like, Margaret! The moment of truth, and that was that. Before she knew it. No! No! I hate women now. Like, what nonsense is this? Um... And leading figures of YouTube's reactionary right-wing community. Dave Rubin, isn't he uh, gay and Jewish? You know, I don't know if uh, we're, we're, we're really applying labels uh, accurately here. Because let me tell you, all right. First of all, it's got to be said, isn't it? Isn't it a strange thing that left-wing is, hey, I'm a lefty. I'm left-wing. Yo, I'm a leftist. I'm all about the left, yo. Oh, my politics? To the left. And everyone goes, Sam, to the left, to the left. No problem. Uh, you go, I'm right wing. Oh, you a Nazi. Wait, what? No. No, no, no. Like, the, it, on the political spectrum, you got some issues, you lean left. Some issues, you lean to the right. It, it's just a visual aid. It's just a visual aid. It's to help describe my position. Where, like, up here, you've got, like, far right further right extreme right yeah that's where the racists and the people who will take away individual liberty uh to preserve the white race or whatever crazy kooky shit they're into that's where they live far left this is where you want to uh in an authoritarian fashion not dissimilar to the far right you want to take away my personal fucking freedom to promote your shit about well in enforced equality and i'm gonna take away your money and give it to less fortunate groups and i'm gonna do it with military backing and state backing like you know <laughs> like neither are good why, why, why? Oh, left. Oh, it's so soft and fluffy. Hey, I'm right wing, actually. What, what are you, uh, evil? Like, it's unreal. So, first of all, the labels are all out of whack. Second of all, calling Dave Rubin right wing as a gay Jew. I mean, shit, dude. 
I, I, I don't know how far to the right you can realistically go if that's in your fucking makeup, if that's in your DNA. Ben Shapiro, Jewish. So let's analyze this. Dave Rubin and Ben Shapiro are Jewish. PewDiePie is an anti-Semite. PewDiePie only follows a few people. Hey, he follows a disproportionate amount of Jews. Weird for an anti-Semite. Very strange. He must be spying on them. He must want to know what those wacky Jews are doing so he can fucking spy on them or something because obviously you've already established in your very fine article vox that he's anti-semitic so why is he following these jews for it must be part he must be keeping an eye on him right must be keeping an eye on these jews no obviously he's not an anti-semite how can an anti-semite ever go you know that ben shapiro great guy what like did you miss the meeting He's one of the most Jewish motherfuckers out there. When he does his TV appearances, he's got his yarmulke on. It's not like he's a secret Jew. No. Somehow, you can be anti-Semitic, but also be a devout follower of the Church of Ben Shapiro. It's nonsense. These people are lying. They are demonstrably lying. And the people that they're lying about are allowing them to lie because they don't want to take the effort to shut these publications down with illegal action. And you do everyone else they smear and slander off the back of it a huge disservice. When PC Games and said something actionable about me, I nutted the fuck up and did something about it. And I will continue to live that way because these publications are out of fucking control. And then... PewDiePie also followed notorious alt-right YouTube. Sargon's many things. He's not alt-right. He's made it very clear he doesn't want to be associated with the alt-right. And all of his problems he's got now stem from the fact that he doesn't want to be associated with the fucking alt-right. He, he tried too hard to pander to the likes of Vox and look where it got him. Yeah, neither is Jordan Peterson, of course not. Again, if I had these guys money, I'm sure Jordan Peterson is set for fucking life with the spike he's had. Best-selling book, sell-out lecture tours, 8,000 people on Patreon. I'm sure Jordan Peterson is going to have a very nice early retirement. I'd take a little bit of that money. I'd get me a lawyer, right? And I would go after these people. I wouldn't want to be called that at all. At all. I would want that staining my legacy, a legacy where you speak up about totalitarianism and stand up to authoritarianism, stand up to racists and any other mode of thought that's prejudicial to people. And this is how they're going to smear you in the press every day. Fuck this. How many lawsuits do you think Vox have in them? Like when Hulk Hogan <laughs> over a sex tape, he shut down Gawker. He did the world a favor. He shut down that grotesque piece of shit publication a publication so vile that it expo like there was this gay pastor who, who was on Gr again you can go look this up there was a uh, uh, and he was a fire and brimstone pastor in the south so again i don't know if you follow these types you know you know the kind and god has said that homosexuality is a despisable thing and if you do lay it down with a man, it is the same as laying down with a beast. And you will burn for all eternity in the hellfire. Because God himself has said that it is Adam and Eve and not Adam and Steve. He, right, so this preacher was one of those guys. Imagine being a preacher preaching that shit but also being a closeted homosexual what a what an awful awful life of conflict and inner turmoil and gorka found out that this fire and brimstone preacher was uh was 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 a homosexual and you know what they did they just exposed him they just printed it this, he wasn't a public figure. He was just a local pastor. And they just exposed him. And they ruined this guy's life. And they did it on the basis. Well, if he's preaching homophobic stuff, he's got it coming. You know, it's like, come on, man. What are you fucking doing, dude? Uh, again, I'll, 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 let me bring this up. 
because it was a few years ago. Maybe I'm remembering. Um, maybe I'm misremembering it. But I mean, they did. They did uh, a ton of shit, dude. I mean, like they they just they they exposed politicians filing affairs and just anything, dude. Like it's like guys, <laughs> like. There's a lot to be said about punching up, man. Like, go after the real rich and the powerful and, you know, and expose corruption. Like, what people are doing with their dicks and telling lies about it. Like, that's some low-hanging fruit, my friends. You have to have a real important position. Like, if a politician was lobbying to make adultery in an imprisonable offense and they had committed adultery, now we're talking. Anyone else? I don't care. Maybe the president. The president cheats on his wife. What else is he going to cheat on? Said it about Donald Trump. Said it about Slick Willie. Said it about, you know, if you're going to, you know, so maybe the highest authority in the land. Maybe I get it. Maybe I, I, I care. Right? Maybe. But it's absurd. So you got to start suing these publications, guys. You got to take them down, man. This is fucking gibberish. You know, like you cannot let them keep saying this stuff about you because perception is reality in this day and age. If I Google PewDiePie right now, the top searches don't come back with le wacky Let's Plays and funny games videos. It comes back with all of the Nazi controversy. I'm sure deliberately, you know, uh, when I Google Jordan Peterson... It's a 50-50 mix. I have to dig to get to his biblical lectures, right? Which he did this great 15-part series analyzing, you know, why the Bible exists in its form and what it all really means and how it's actually a broader, you know, you know, it's allegorical to elements of human life that you need to be better and so. Because you know he's a, you know he's a Christian, you know he believes that shit. Um, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Why do I constantly have to read Dave Rubin is a far-right enabler? They're going after the Joe Rogan podcast. They say Joe Rogan is platforming Nazis, you know? And again, that's where you go, Alex Jones. This is the Alex Jones impression that I always do when I talk about Alex Jones. Jesus Christ, it was the anniversary of fucking... Uh, it was the anniversary of Sandy Hook today. I wonder what Alex Jones did for that. Um, whatever. Thoughts for off Twitch, maybe. But, you know, Alex Jones is, is many things. He's definitely not a Nazi. He's definitely not a white supremacist. He's a, he's, he's a fucking nut job. But he's, he's not a white supremacist or a Nazi. You know? And now, because, oh, Alex Jones went on the Joe Rogan podcast. And, you know, oh, Jordan Peterson's been on the Joe Rogan podcast. They're going after Joe Rogan. Joe fucking Rogan! Think about that. The like, you know, Joe Rogan will have a guy on who has contentious opinions and they'll be like, yeah, but, you know, isn't that kind of fucking stupid, Gavin? Isn't that kind of stupid? Oh, hey, hey, Paul, just uh, just bring up just bring up that video. Have you seen what this gorilla can do? Have you seen this? So, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Just look at that fucking gorilla, dude. Look at his. Just, uh. Yeah, Jamie. Bring it up, Jamie. Just bring up that gorilla. Look, imagine what that gorilla could bench press. And it's like, that's the end of it, dude. Are you, is, is this verboten now? It's ridiculous. They're literally going after Joe Rogan, man. Like, that's coming. I'm telling you again. Three months from now, you're going to have read a number of articles. Joe Rogan's problematic links to the alt-right. 100%. They're coming. There's already been one or two. Small, smaller publications. They're gonna, there's gonna be another sacrifice at the altar of woke, and I don't know who it's gonna be, but it's coming, and then it's gonna be Joe. And now, and now you're gonna get thinking, wait a minute, this is crazy. They really are purging anyone. It's not enough, okay, it's not enough that they purge the people. Now they purge anybody that talks to the people, interacts with the people. Remember, I gotta eat shit every day. I did six months of Breitbart. I ain't proud of it, but I ain't ashamed of it. I didn't write anything bad. I don't buy any of that shit. I called out. Even when I was working at Breitbart, I called out that shit. People said to me, you seen this? Fucking, they got a black crime section. I went, yeah, that's outrageous. That's, an, that's 
beyond unacceptable. Wouldn't have happened when Andrew Breitbart was alive, by the way. So, you know, you 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 have to fuck it. like they come for you, man. They, they, you can't even be vaguely fucking associated with these people. And then, once that next outer shell is gone, who are they going for next? Why not subscribers of Jordan Peterson on YouTube, man? Subscribe to him. Well, what what? Because here, here's the uh, here's the other thing they're doing. Uh, Patrick Kaplek. A, a running joke, okay? Uh, who for some reason is uh, not blocked me. I mean, uh, I'll give him many uh, many criticisms. He doesn't seem to run uh, block bots. Patrick Kaplek said something to me today. Uh, said so, so rather tweet today, and I saw it. Um, so let me let me uh, let me just find this. He so he tweeted this out. And I think this should really tell you about what they plan to do next, like where this is going. Um, I suspect the next 10 years are going to be a long, dark process in really understanding how generationally corrupting the YouTube algorithm has been to young men and boys. I don't know why it's just young men and boys. Uh, maybe Patrick Klopet can explain how the YouTube algorithm doesn't corrupt women. Or maybe women are incorruptible. Maybe women are born pure. I mean, this is a guy who made rape jokes when he was at college. Um, so maybe maybe he's a woke feminist type that I'm not. But what what is what does that mean? What is the corrupting process? Because let me tell you, I don't know if you've noticed this, Patrick. The YouTube algorithm, it very rarely directs you to anything fucking controversial or or, that, or anything that shouldn't be on YouTube. In fact. It's weird, isn't it? Because when I go on YouTube, I get recommended shit I would never in a million years want to see, want to support, want to click on. You know, I get linked that BuzzFeed video where there were four, five BuzzFeed journalists with low testosterone. Like, I, I don't want to see those fucking losers. What are you talking about? Why are you recommending me this? Vice, his munchies with a Jack Black lookalike called Matty Madison or whatever the fuck his name is. He cooks matzo ball soup. I don't want to see that either. And fuck Vice forever. What, 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 where's the where's the radicalization uh, that 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 is that is, that is happening to me? Because I, I watch Tim Pool, but I get recommended Vice and Buzzfeed and blah blah blah. In fact, like if I just bring up YouTube right now, let me show you some of the videos I get recommended. Keep in mind, uh, oh, I'm red pilled. Richard Lewis, the red pill. Uh, you know, let's have a look. Ever uh, since our core. Calm down. Um, right here. Double click there. So let me tell you what I got here, right? I got, um, I got a, a, a I, I'm not going to screen share because I'm always terrified I'll reveal all my like evil, evil secrets, you know? So I got, uh, I got recommended, uh, a, a red letter media video. Right? Yeah, I got recommended Linus, right? Uh, but I got recommended red letter media, right? Uh, because I love Red Light Media and I subscribe to them. I got recommended something called Epicurious. Bread expert guesses cheap versus expensive bread. I got recommended a channel I've never clicked on in my life called Get Curried. With 12 million views. How to make butter chicken at home restaurant style. I got linked to Jordan Peterson video. Adam and Eve. Self-consciousness evil and death i've watched that video before i got linked to joe rogan video on pirating music dan Harmon on fallout 4 half-life vr links found in artifact update um jonathan this a bbc video jonathan pie's rant on cultural appropriation and then Here's the edgy stuff. Joe Rogan on pirating music. Gentrification is great by 1791. Um, world's first zero damage all bosses run in Dark Souls 3 by Squiller Killer. And the Alex Jones Gavin McInnes interview. 
I, like, is this, am I being radicalized? Sorry, 1791 L. Uh, am I is am I being am I being radicalized with this selection of videos? Listening to Dan Harmon, notoriously woke motherfucker, learning how to make curry, learning what different types of bread there are, listening to Jordan Peterson analyze the Bible, listening to a BBC endorsed rant about cultural appropriation, watching people fucking do runs on Dark Souls. Like the only thing here that's even remotely uh controversial is an alex jones interview with gavin mckinnis i don't know why that's recommended because i thought info wars was banned and uh and, and, and gentrification is great by 1791 l um and yeah i watch his videos i think they're well edited i think he makes some good points um like is that it am i am i am i am i all right now is that is that how it works so I don't know. So you, you you tell me, Patrick Kilpeck, about how how this uh, generationally, you know, you know, corrupting the YouTube algorithm is. Am I, oh, maybe I'm too old. Maybe I'm too normy. Maybe I can't be corrupted. Um. But then look, right? Uh, a guy replies, like, definitely not trying to get attention. This is definitely a real thing. That definitely really happened. I've been fighting this with my 17 year old son for the last few years, and it is overwhelming and scary. And Patrick, like, wow, really? Jeez. Don't want to say Jesus. Jeez. Really? And he was not sure of your specific reference, but he stumbled deep and deeper into content that fed in onto itself. Starting when he was 12, 13, ideas and concepts that weren't based in fact that was then supported by other content and references that essentially just supported the same. Hasn't said anything what these ideas are. What this kind of stuff. Put it this way. 17. Hey, to break it to your friends, you're an adult. You might not be equipped to be an adult, but you're an adult. You should be an adult. You should be out in that big wide world. I was at 16. I was out the house, you know, and if I'd listened or liked anything that my fucking parents were into, I'd have been fucking mortified at 17. 100%. Then... Think Progress, a propaganda publication itself. Think Progress. They say YouTube unintentionally acts as an indoctrination mechanism to basically make people link to... Rad what radical content is there on YouTube? Like, how much radical content is there on YouTube? Like, seriously. Uh, like, uh, let me let me try and find some. Uh, obviously, I can't show it, but let's, let's try. Um... Let's type in something. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So I've typed in the phrase neo Nazis. Let's have a look because if if YouTube is is is, is a harbor for neo Nazism, then this search will bring up loads of neo Nazi content. Let's have a look. Life in a neo-Nazi village by the Telegraph, an approved YouTube channel. I'm guessing they're going to say that it's bad and these people are bad because these people are bad. Neo-Nazis let a journalist in their group. Here's what he saw. That's investigative journalism by Business Insider. Neo-Nazi says emboldened by Trump. CNN, of course. Uh, the Jews are hiding the truth. What the neo-Nazis in Germany think. This is, uh, I, that looks like Hebrew. This is an, obviously an Israeli news channel. Neo-Nazis are on the rise in Sweden. Neo-Nazi threat in new Ukraine. Neo-Nazis burned a swastika after their rally in Georgia. Former neo-Nazi explains his radicalization. Inside the neo-Nazi village of Jamal, very popular uh, neo-Nazi village there, neo-Nazis explain why they like Donald Trump. Where is all this radicalizing content? I've literally typed in neo-Nazi, uh, you know, radicalize me. This is without being logged into an account. So this has nothing to do with any of my previous searches. These are the top recommended 
channels when you type in neo-nazi the murder of an american nazi self-described neo-nazi causes commotion at trump rally neo-nazi demonstration neo-nazi ideology spreads in berlin german neo-nazis rally to mark the death of rudolf Hess. neo-nazi quits the movement and opens up about his jewish heritage and comes out as gay like where where are the pro neo-nazi where is this pro neo-nazi content on youtube where is it because because i i thought I, I i was ready to get radicalized because that's that's obviously what youtube does right it's bullshit it's not radicalizing anybody if 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 the uh, i nearly did the obama that if 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 it's like this hotbed of fucking nazi content why am I not getting fucking radical? Where is I, I've just done a full page, a full sweep, everything decrying Nazism, all from approved YouTube channels. The only thing talking about that. So this YouTube algorithm you're talking about, Patrick, I don't know, brother. It looks like it actually doesn't promote Nazism at all. Maybe you weren't talking about Nazism because I noticed you tap dance around it, but I ain't being radicalized. Maybe what are there other belief systems? I mean, it has been proven that YouTube has harbored ISIS channels. If you remember, we had uh, we had a, a guy on the channel that a dedic uh, we did an interview with him. We did a entire uh, you know we created a fucking piece of software that was designed to detect jihadist channels, and he called out YouTube on that basis. But like, look, look at the people linking to it. Like PewDiePie is a white supremacist, okay? And then someone goes, "Oh, you linked to a Vox article? Yikes!" Then. Oh, Fortune wrote up the same thing. Like, they, they, you know, they're going after YouTube and they're going to go after anybody, right? If you've ever clicked on a video that's suspect, trust me, they are going to start scrubbing up your mentions real soon. In fact, whew, let's go, let's go bold here. Within two years, probably before the next uh, American election, there will be a... um. That you'll get a pop-up if you're on social media, and especially YouTube. If you've looked at any video that's considered, like, radical or extremist in the past, like, you know, if you ever looked at InfoWars or Paul Joseph Watson or any of these people who will be purged off the platform by 2020, you'll get a pop-up, and it'll pretty much ask you, do you renounce your previous browsing history? And if you don't, you're going to get quarantined, right? I'm ta that's coming. They, 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 they're going to want you to renounce and say, hey, I'm a good user. I was misunderstood. I'm, hey, I don't want to watch. No, I'm telling you. Clip this. Clip this and save this for when it comes. Because th that's next. They don't... Purging creators is only part of the problem. At the end of the day, any YouTube user can create a channel, upload videos, create content, comment. Right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Social credit score by any other name. They won't hit you on a government level. America will never go for that. They'll hit you in terms of like, in, I've already said, you will end up with a social media credit score where all these companies are going to come together. And if you're banned on one uh, platform, you're banned on all of them. And they've already demonstrated their willingness to do that coordinated when they get the right nudge from their friends in the media. This is coming. This is coming. You, 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 this, so let me tell you exactly how this will work. You'll get a pop-up and it'll say, we've noticed you have clicked on a Paul Joseph Watson video, an Alex Jones video, a Sargon of a Card video. You know, would, would you like to see uh, a video that corrects their point of view? And if you say, yes, you're all good. You're all Gucci. You'll, you'll be given this re-educational video about why these people are bad. And if you say no, you're going to end up in this weird quarantine state where you can only look at nonsense, but you can't comment or interact on any of the other stuff. They'll still benefit from your click, but you will not exist to the rest of YouTube. Hell, I even noticed, I had a comment, I used the word cunt in, in one of my comments where I replied to a guy who was talking shit on my YouTube channel. My comment disappeared on my own channel. As the guy who owns the channel. Nope. You won't be saying cunt, my friend. That's a slur now. It's my channel. 
If I want to call someone a cunt for coming into my channel and acting like a cunt, let me let me do that. Can I not dictate what's appropriate? No, you absolutely can't. No, 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 no. There is no cunt. Cunt is a slur now. Cunt is a slur now. So, and yeah, exactly. It won't matter. You know, Americans will go, well, we don't like it. And I'll go, well, we're British, all right? And we do like it. And they're Irish and they like it. And they're Australian. And fuck knows they use it more than any other fucking nationality on planet Earth. You can't take away cunt from all of these people. I mean, that's half of our vocab. And they'll go, well, sorry, we're American, so. No. So, cunt is a slur. It's all, they're already pushing for it. Retard and cunt are the next two to go, my friends. Enjoy your fill. Say it while you can. I mean, even though, et from an et etymological standpoint, uh... Retard is no more offensive than moron or cretin, which were both brought in to describe people of a particular IQ. Um, uh, you know, re retard is just from the French word slow. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. If I say, hey, you're retarded, it just means you're underdeveloped for like where you should be in time. You know, it's not, it's not, it's not denigrating disabled people. If you use the word retard to describe a disabled person, obviously. But no, the retard's gone. Cunt's gonna go. It's all gonna go, guys. It's all, it's all, you know. Yeah. Moron and cretin are good replacements. But here's the thing, like, so what happens is we all wake up tomorrow. Woke, woke president Hillary is uh, inv invoked... That uh, uh, anyone saying uh, the word retard uh, will be convicted of hate speech. So everybody stops saying retard. Uh, and then we, we, we stop saying it. And then we go, ah, you're a cretin. You're an imbecile. These are all words that have the same etymological root. It is a way to describe somebody who is mentally underdeveloped for their age. And then they just become the slur, dude. I mean, that's been going on since time immemorial. Like, language evolves that way. And everyone goes, ah imbecile's a bit problematic isn't it mm -hmm. and then the think tank bans that word and bans that word and bans that word and eventually you're just stuck with like you can't say anything you know